what Columbia does, it, 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 it tells you that you're going to try this. You may not like it, but you're going to try it. And if you do like it, we'll give you as much of it as you want. And I started thinking at that point that you could, you know, you could have a lot more impact with a camera than you could with a pencil. The Renaissance is great, but modern art was much, much, much more exciting. So I was always interested in how people can grow as individuals while they're growing their team or business. You have given Columbia your greatest resources, your time, your energy, your ideas, and your inspiration. Virginia Lodell Wright, 1951, Barnard College. Barnard set me on a life path of uh, an interest in art that continues to today. Julius Held at Barnard was an extraordinary teacher and charismatic and uh, and I loved the Renaissance and I did not like contemporary art. A friend of mine um, persuaded me to take a class with Meyer Shapiro at Columbia. From the minute I attended those classes I was a total convert. I did make a couple of lifelong friends in, in the art department, one being Barbara Novak, who later made history of her own, bringing the world's attention to American art. My friend Mary Elizabeth King was more sophisticated than I was. Dylan Thomas was reading at Columbia, and she said, you've got to come with me and hear this poet. There he was, reading things like do not go gentle into that good night. Um, it was unbelievable. It was fun to learn about uh, education from the, the other point of view, having been a user, and then, then to be on the other side of the providers. There was a naming opportunity at Barnard Hall, uh, a big uh, lecture classroom. I, I, I didn't want to put my name on it, but uh, Judith Shapiro suggested how about naming it for a professor? We were all in love with Julius Held, and it was an opportunity to express that affection. My granddaughter, Ada Potter, uh, graduated from Barnard, and it was the same year that we gave the uh, Jenny Holzer bench to Barnard, and Jenny Holzer came to graduation that day. The bedazzling and ever-beautiful women of Barnard College. I think Barnard always has been staunchly independent. Hooray for Barnard for being a woman's college and long may she live. <laughs> Adam Vane, 2001, Teachers College. I didn't come to Teachers College to be a teacher. I came here to go out into the world and make a difference uh, in organizations. That was what I came for and that is what I've been able to do. It's really the field of organization development, which is how do you work with an organization to help people be more effective? And that's really helpful as a consultant to have that lens. The great thing about the classroom experience at Columbia is the interactive nature, because I think you learn as much from the people you're studying with and working with as you do in the classroom. Everything that I learned here at Teachers College in the Organizational Leadership Program, I then applied as Alumni Association President. Uh, I brought some changes to the way that we did our business. So we, we represent 90,000 people living out there in the world. I was asked to organize a speaker series, and the first speaker that we had was Edgar Schein, one of the founding fathers of organizational development. We had over 250 50 people attend at the Columbia Club. It was one of the most successful programs in university history. And so TC COLA, which is the organizational leadership alumni from our school, that group was born. The purpose of the Idea Cafe is to break the usual barriers that come up in a networking function. So instead of having people talk about something that may be on the surface, they're connecting around ideas in ways that are meaningful to them. I never would have imagined that I'd be working uh, at the level and in, and in the spaces that I'm working in. And it's really been the support of both the education and the alumni uh, work 
that I've done that has led, I think, to the success I have now. Adam Vein, Teachers College. Walking down those stairs and seeing those 40,000 some faces, this sea of blue, was an incredibly exciting experience. Linda A. Winslow, 1967 Masters, Columbia Journalism School. It's really important to have a sense of where you came from, and this is, this is where I came from. It was a very surprisingly moving day to me because my dad came, he graduated I think in 42 from the college. My mom graduated from Barnard that same year. So they met here. I'd been working for a newspaper, the Berkshire Eagle in uh, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. And I had never had a television set the whole time I was growing up. My mother was opposed to TV, so I got even. I went and joined Fred Friendly's class in television production. It was uh, Fred's first year at Columbia, and he, he was learning too. One Sunday magazine uh, writer decided Fred would make a good example as he was talking about how he was taking his, his vision of what is good journalism and trying to raise a new generation of television journalists who would carry forward. I think my alumni involvement is connecting me to the future of journalism in ways uh, big and small. I think uh, the bonds that you make in one year, it's such an intense year, but the bonds that you create with your classmates at Columbia uh, it's, are, are unbreakable. I consider mentoring and hiring and encouraging, even after they've left the news hour, the people who went to Columbia to be a kind of sacred calling. And I'm taking something from Columbia as much as I'm giving it back, and that's what I like about the Board of Visitors experience. So I can see that the new centers that are being created are teaching students things that my generation was never exposed to. We will walk with pride because you will find among these young women and men the qualities of our greatest journalists. The students at Columbia are going to be leading the next generation of, of journalists in ways to, to use those tools better and to tell better stories, keeping everybody better informed about what's going on. Mitchell B. Freinberg, 1973, Columbia College, 1977, Master of Business Administration, Columbia Business School. <laughs> Columbia changed my life by taking me out of the suburbs of New Jersey and telling me there was more to the world than just commuting into New York. I could, I could do calculus. I could understand um, how, to, how to forecast the weather, things like that. And these were things that up until then I thought I wasn't even capable of, of approaching. I was the photography editor of the yearbook. I was quite keen on photography in those days. Columbia was all male. So it wasn't a terribly social place where the parties that, that, are, that, that did take place were a bunch of guys sitting around drinking beer. Columbia College was there to challenge you, to provoke you. Um, business school was there almost as a uh, vocational school to help you learn certain techniques that would allow you to get a job. When I was asked would I be interested in, in doing some interviewing, I said, yeah, of course, because I thought to the extent Columbia College uh, or the engineering school would have people who had grown up someplace exotic and for me England was still exotic um, that could help whereas if you go to English University or, or Scottish University you have to decide uh, when you're in the equivalent of, of the ninth grade what subjects you want to specialize in but understand if you go to Columbia you, you're gonna have the chance to take English to take history to take classics a foreign language music art and at that point, you can make an informed choice. When my daughter came, it was a more social place. It was a, a friendlier place. It was a more interesting place to be. Columbia now needs to make sure it's better and better regarded each, each year. And that means better facilities, better, better scholarships, better teaching, whatever it takes.